everybody and welcome to the second in a series of our STEM Forward with Women podcasts. I'm Tuling Green, Marketing Director at Udacity, and I'm thrilled to be your host today, especially as we approach International Women's Day on March the 8th. Udacity's mission is to change lives, businesses and nations through radical digital talent transformation in order to create a job ready digital workforce on a global scale. Part of this mission is to encourage more women into STEM related careers. So I'm so excited to be joined by Taruna Naidu today, a fellow woman in tech and a partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers in Johannesburg within the assurance practice. Taruna's a chartered accountant and a registered auditor who has contributed to the profession by serving on a range of professional bodies. She's currently the learning and development leader for PwC Africa and has got 13 years of experience in the development of people. And she's also recently appointed as the PwC Africa ethics and business conduct leader. Taruna is a self-confessed technology enthusiast and interested in understanding how technology can support us in getting more. She's a proud wife and a mum of two incredible kids and one enduring fur baby. And even with her busy lifestyle, she recently graduated from Udacity's Data Science for Business Leaders course. So welcome Taruna and thank you for joining me today to discuss your personal journey and how you see the best way to create more opportunities for the STEM related careers of the future. So firstly, congratulations on your graduation. Tell us more about what was the most rewarding aspect of completing the Udacity course and, and what were you able to take back to your day-to-day -day role at PwC? Thanks very much, uh, Tulin. So when I heard that I had been uh, nominated to take advantage of this amazing opportunity to be part of a Women in STEM program and to complete the Data Science for Business Leaders Nano degree with Udacity, I was incredibly excited. I mean, how often do we really have the opportunity to, to upskill and to invest a tangible amount of time in building new skills? And I'm not talking about the one hour updates or the short videos that we sometimes complete to get a little bit more knowledge on a particular topic. I mean, really investing time in our own development, uh, particularly in a topic that's still emerging for many businesses. So perhaps one of the most rewarding aspects of being part of the program was consciously making the time to deepen my understanding of data science and being supported by PwC and Udacity to see it through to completion. And then, of course, applying what I had learned on the program to my role at PwC. So being in the L&D team, we have over the last few years identified a number of standalone projects that we thought would help us to create efficiency and to free up our team members' time so that they could really focus on more meaningful work. And it's actually incredible if I look at the tasks that the team is completing today versus what they were doing five years ago. It's vastly different. So to think that we had people in the team whose full-time responsibility was really just to mark people off as attended on training programs, and, and now we have an app for that. So of course, the, the composition and the skills of the team have shifted dramatically over time. Um, but what I learned on the Data Science for Business Leaders program that really supported me was how to think more holistically about data strategy and how to start to pull these loose standing projects into a more comprehensive strategy. And I think what was particularly useful were methodologies around how to rank some of the projects based on viability, which is quite a practical skill that can be applied in your everyday environment. Uh, and the, these were really some of the tools I felt I needed to drive you know, even more positive change for the team. Wow, sounds like it's been a real positive change for, for yourself and the team. Thank you. Um, so as we approach International Women's Day, it's a, it's a global event where we celebrate being women. Can you share some of the hurdles you've personally faced in your career? So it's, it's rewarding to be a female in a corporate environment, um, but you know, honestly, that all also comes with its challenges. Uh, I think now, more than ever, there are really opportunities uh, in business for women and for minorities, quite frankly. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not tough. So when we created this impetus for change and we set targets like percentage representation of women in, in leadership positions, unfortunately, I think there's also an ugly side. 
And sadly, it has given rise to, to a lack of trust in, in individuals' ability. So, so a form of bias. And for me personally, I think what it's meant is that I've sometimes doubted my own abilities and, and I'd question why I was being given a particular opportunity or why I've been given a seat at the table. And I think it really fed my limiting beliefs. And I've had to fight to remind myself on an ongoing basis that there's unique value that only I can add. Personally, I have to say, I've also felt a sense of isolation and exclusion. I mean, even when I was in a room full of professional men, breaking in and getting the recognition that someone deserves is sometimes not easy. And part of our role really as, as women leaders is to shift mindsets and to transition the culture at the leadership levels from a boys club uh, to one that, uh, you know, enables women to achieve some of these top, top ranking positions. There are unfortunately unspoken conditions in a corporate environment. And I have to say, I face some of these headwinds in my own journey to leadership. For example, you know, assumptions being made about whether I'm committed to a particular project or committed to the firm, because I needed to integrate my home and my work life. I needed to cook for my family, spend time caring for my kids. But what I've seen over the last two years, and, and one of the benefits that have come out of COVID is that many of us have personally experienced you know, the opportunities that were available to us to, to really reassess what's important in our lives. And it forced us to rethink what was possible, how we work, where we work, when we work. And I hope that we don't lose sight of the many lessons that the pandemic has brought and that we use some of the changes that we've introduced as a stepping stone to a more inclusive corporate culture. So these personal experiences have really fueled my interest in learning and development. I honestly believe that education plays a key role in developing a more inclusive workplace. And the lack of inclusivity can traumatize women. You know, you could live in fear of, of work. And this in turn really does undermine our performance, which reinforces the dominance of men. So education and the support of young women professionals early on in their careers is essential for me if we want to break out of some of this cycle. No, you raise a very important you know, few points in that, um, in that, you know, that imposter syndrome that, that women face is, is real uh, and not often, you know, out there in the open. Um, I know I've experienced that myself uh, and uh, yeah, I can relate to that completely. And, and I heard a very interesting quote from uh, a STEM Forward Women with Women conference that uh, we ran at Udacity last year, where the change has to start by women who are who have sons um, and bringing them up in a in an inclusive um, culture where women and, and men are equal. Um, and I thought it was a very insightful quote where she she said, you know, it starts with mothers and fathers training um, the future men uh, of our working generation. So uh, absolutely. That, that's resonated with me yeah um, as a mom to a, a 12 year old boy I completely identify and uh, and I have to say to you a lot of that um, you know the way in which you raise a boy versus a girl because I've got one of each thankfully mm -hmm. uh, it's almost ingrained in you know yeah. to to ex have certain expectations of one gender over the other and and we have to reprogram ourselves yes to to get that right yeah absolutely so, so tell me a little bit more about the partnership uh, PwC has with Udacity. How's that helped you develop the learning and development function? So Udacity has been a wonderful partner. And uh, honestly, I think access to the Udacity platform has really given us an opportunity to get our people stuck into topics that we wouldn't traditionally have, um, you know, uh, delved into things like programming. Um, and, and the programs really allow them to develop some deep skills in these areas. So I think the combination of the world-class content, the community of like-minded individuals, so the social learning aspects that come along with some of the nano degrees or with all of the nano degrees, uh, and the practical application of these skills through the projects has really been sort of a winning formula. Mm -hmm. um, so within our organization, we have a group of individuals that we call digital accelerators across our Africa business. Uh, and we've exposed a number of them to the Udacity Nano degrees. And, and I can honestly say that we've seen a tangible shift, both in terms of their confidence and their capabilities. Uh, so the program's also been a fantastic complement to our existing learning and development offerings. Um, we've done some work uh, in the past around 
um, you know, data fundamentals. Uh, we have intermediate digital academies, and we've also got advanced programs in-house on, on topics like Altrix and Power BI. Um, but we've really seen, uh, you know, enhancing sort of skills or deep skills for for these for this accelerator cohort in particular. Uh, we've also found that the nano degree certification really complements some of our own internal certifications. So we've launched a, a digital badging project, which we currently have available to over 9,000 employees across Africa. Uh, and so overall, I think for me, it's been a worthwhile investment of our people's time and, and energy as well. That's, that's so good to hear. As a, as a Udassian, um, having joined Udacity just seven months ago, it's, it's great to hear stories like this. So thank you. Um, and can you share your personal sort of best advice for women overcoming um, the, the obstacles and succeeding in their careers? You know, I think when you attend, uh, you know, you, you referenced uh, uh, attending a conference last year, and there's so many pieces of advice out there. It's so, it's so difficult to, to sort of sort it down to a couple. Um, but I think, you know, my advice for, for women leaders is really to take advantage of the opportunities that come across your path. Initially, I think, you know, it often feels daunting, or it's overwhelming, um, you know, when you uh, given a new challenge or the opportunity to sort of broaden your skills base. Um, but, you know, as Eleanor Roosevelt said, do one thing every day that scares you, right? And, and I think being out of your comfort zone is really where real growth happens for any individual. Um, you know, we are at, at such an interesting time in our history. Everything is changing. So everyone needs to upskill, to reskill, to adapt. And, and I would say to, to women leaders out there and aspiring leaders, take advantage of the state of unknown. You know, we're all living through uh, flux and, and spend some time, you know, investing in developing yourself um, so that you can take advantage of, of this unknown and, and really progress your career. Uh, I think the other good news is that none of us had to do it on our own. Uh, if you've got energy and you've got a passion, you know, find people, mentors, sponsors within your organization, like-minded individuals that can really support you in terms of meeting your career goals. Uh, and when you find one of them, don't be afraid to leverage the relationship, you know, seek their guidance, seek their counsel, ask them to share their experiences and to lend you um, their support. Uh, as women, we really don't like to burden other people. But in this new, volatile, ever-changing world, none of us are going to succeed on our own. So my advice is to take advantage of the support that's out there. Yeah, that sounds like real pragmatic advice. Um... And one that I can take heed of as well. I remember there was a book that a former HR leader that I used to work with recommended. I forget who the author is, but it was who's in your personal boardroom. Uh, and that that refers to the mentors that you that you mention and, and take, you know, grab those opportunities to have in your network. Um, so, yeah, very, very sound advice. Thank you, Taruna. Well, I've. We could chat all day, really, but um, I want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your perspective and, and the insights with, with me and the listeners of this podcast on, on how we can really make a, a step forward in closing the gender gap in, in STEM-related fields. I enjoyed our conversation very much, so thank you for your time again. Thank you for having me.